appreciate that. Yes, look after their health first. On to the news, everybody. You won't hear about this on Fox or CNN, but the Bush regime has quietly tooled up to utilize the U.S. military in engaging American dissidents after the next big crisis. We told you a little about this last week, but here's the full picture. In a frightening piece of legislation that was passed alongside the Military Commissions Act, the newly passed bill greases the skids for armed confrontation against citizens and abolishes posse comitatus. Public Law 109-364, which was signed on October 17th in a private Oval Office ceremony, now allows the president to declare a public emergency in the U.S. for whatever reason he sees fit. The bill also allows the president to station troops, including foreign troops, anywhere in America, and to take control of state-based National Guard units without the consent of the governor or local police authorities in order to, and this is a quote, suppress public dissent and disorder. Frank Morales, an Episcopal priest in New York City and an anti-war activist, said the groups listed as troublemakers include tax protesters, gun rights activists, militia groups, religious groups, anti-war protesters, homeschoolers, and various other general anti-government dissenters. Morales said the authorities know full well that a widespread awakening is taking place, especially now that the truth about 9-11 and the reason for the Iraq war are unfolding. And he speculated that the trigger event for the push to use the U.S. military against American dissidents is right around the corner and could happen any time within the next year. We have a link on our breaking news page at OutThereTV.com to the government's Operation Garden Plot bill, which details what we've just talked about. If President Bush gets his way, beginning on January 14th, 2007, we will all be on no-fly lists, unless the government actually gives us permission to leave or re-enter the United States. The Department of Homeland Security wants all airlines, cruise lines, even fishing boats to obtain clearance for every single passenger they take in or out of the U.S. And it doesn't matter if you have a U.S. passport, which normally would give someone the right to enter and leave the United States at any time they want. When the system comes into effect next January, if the agency says no to a clearance request for whatever reason, you won't be permitted to enter or leave the United States. Consider what might happen if you're a U.S. passport holder on assignment in a country like Saudi Arabia. Your visa is about to expire, so you attempt to board your flight back to the United States. But wait, you can't get on because you don't have permission from Homeland Security. Foreign immigration officials then escort you to a detention center where you can be detained indefinitely until your immigration status is sorted out. The question is, why would Homeland Security deny an American citizen permission to leave or enter the U.S.? No one seems to know because under the new Military Commissions Act, the entire procedure can be kept secret with no right of appeal. And that's exactly what happened in Nazi Germany. Basically, if the HSA decides it doesn't like you, you're a prisoner, either inside or outside the United States, and whether or not you hold a U.S. passport. For more information on this proposed regulation, check out our breaking news page and read the details on this latest Department of Homeland Security travel document.